Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. Uh, the headline for the month is Sales in Mortgages Lag, Foreclosure Activities Continues to Climb. The first image you're going to see is of deeds. We actually had a pretty solid month in June for recording of deeds. There were 936 deeds recorded in June, more than the 797 deeds recorded in May. It was the highest uh, this year, 17% uh, less than last year, however. There were 1,127 deeds recorded in June last year. But, but 2021 was a banner year. Surprisingly, during COVID, it was a lot of real estate activity. Year to date, we're down 12%. The next image you're going to see is the sales throughout Plymouth County from Abington to Whitman. Every community saw sales. Plymouth had the largest number of sales, followed by Brockton, but every community had sales within the community. And then again, most of them were higher than the previous month. The next issue you're going to see is the one that we're having the most change in, in mortgages particularly compared to 2021, when everyone was refinancing their mortgages, when the rates went up, that pretty much bottomed out. So most of the mortgages you're seeing now are purchase mortgages, mortgages people use to purchase property. There are 1,811 <clears throat> mortgages recorded in June, more than the 1,793 in May, down 42% compared to last June. And year to date, uh, they're down 44%. And again, it's primarily because interest rates have gone up. The next one you're going to see are foreclosure deeds. We follow those very closely. And in fact, my guest in the second segment is going to be talking a little bit about our efforts to keep foreclosures in check. There were only seven foreclosure deeds throughout Plymouth County in June, less than the 10 in May, but 250% more than in June of last year because there was a foreclosure moratorium in place. Year to date, the number of foreclosure deeds have gone up 60%. We're seeing a little uptick in the number of foreclosure notices. A foreclosure notice is the first document we see at the registry that people are in trouble. Uh, there were 29 foreclosure notices recorded in June, less than the 31 in May, but 71% more than June of last year, and 129% more year to day. To date, rather, you're going to see a listing of foreclosures and orders of notice for all the communities in Plymouth County, and you still see a lot of zeros. Um, and that'll continue for a while until uh, the banks get caught up with, with some of the issues of non-payment. Non I want to advise people that um, we offer a free fraud alert for people who uh, want to sign up for it. Anything that gets recorded against your property, you get an email. Certainly something that is worth doing. And go to our website under resources and go to fraud, and you can sign up for it. Uh, the other thing I always warn people is beware of a lot of scams out there with real estate. Particularly, uh, there's a mailing that people send out and offer to get you a copy of your deed. For um, $57, you can get a copy of your deed at one of our three offices in Brockton, Plymouth, and Rockland for a dollar a page. Uh, the addresses are on our website, PlymouthDeeds.org. So don't fall for that trap. It really bothers me when I see those requests coming in and know those people have been scammed. So I have a great guest coming in in the second segment of the show, Cindy Pendergast of NeighborWorks Housing Solutions, talking about the current status of foreclosures, the work they do to prevent them, and other great programs that they offer for classes for first-time home buyers and other buyers. So we'll see you in the next segment. 
Welcome back to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This show is about uh, educational in nature. We've had surveyors, appraisers, commercial real estate brokers, and a lot of people in the real estate business, many, many dozens of realtors. But there's also a lot of great non-profit partners that have a big role in the real estate market. And I have a great guest today, Cindy Pendergast of NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. And I know, Cindy, we've had a great partnership over many years, particularly since the housing meltdown of 2008, uh, helping people work their way through foreclosures. Right. So can you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and how you get into this line of work? Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having me today. Sure. It's, uh, as you mentioned, um, it's a partnership, and that's really... I think the, the most important thing to say is that it does take a partnership in our community to serve the people that are um, in mortgage distress or even home buying. So, um, so as you mentioned, I work for NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. I just had my 10-year uh, anniversary there. So I manage the um, Brockton office, and we do um, most of our counseling there, um, first-time home buyer education, financial coaching, uh, foreclosure prevention counseling and a whole host of um, homeless resources. So anybody that's facing homelessness, um, we have a, a, a crew of counselors that can help assist them with some resources and next steps. Right. So let's talk a little bit about our shared role in trying to prevent foreclosures. The, the numbers are down. There was a foreclosure moratorium during COVID. Um, it has been removed. So we're seeing a gradual creeping up of notices particularly, but also a lot of more foreclosures. Anybody that follows the legal pages sees that. Yeah. So what we do is we send you every month our foreclosure notices, and you want to talk about what, what you guys do after that. Absolutely. So um, part of the foreclosure process is that at some point in the process, you'll get a letter from the Registry of Deeds um, with a notice of foreclosure. And um, is it, it's a sailor and serviceman's um, letter, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. they can't foreclose, and the state of Massachusetts can't foreclose if you're in active military. So you'll get a letter saying, um, you know, if you are in the active military, you can come to a co this court date. Most people see that court date and they think that that's the foreclosure date, mm -hmm. but that's not true. And so, um, but, it, but it does generate some ac action and urgency on people's part. So. In that sense, it's it's kind of a good thing, and so what we do is um, they usually what we do in partnership with the registry is anybody that's getting that letter, we will send them a flyer, and I did send um, to BCA a copy of the flyer, but we send a flyer out, and basically it says, you know, you're struggling with your mortgage, we're here to help, and so NeighborWorks Housing Solutions has um, housing HUD certified housing counselors right. that can help people you know, at any point in the foreclosure process to be able to navigate what their next steps are. Yes, yeah, so once those no notices go public and they're in the newspaper, they get um, besieged by yeah. uh, a lot of different people from all different directions. And the fact that you are a federally authorized housing counselor um, and trained in that uh, and, and don't take money for that. Correct. Is, is absolutely a tremendous right. opportunity so, for people to take a step. Mm -hmm. And we always tell people, don't wait. The longer you wait, the more trouble you'll get into. Right. So generally, when they get that notice from the registry, they have already been receiving letters. Mm -hmm. And so what we say is, open your mail. If At the first sign of a mortgage, mortgage um, struggle, call your lender, talk to your lender, explain what's happening. Um, many times they will offer a workout solution to you, especially um, if you have an FHA loan, you're already pl paying mortgage insurance in case you default on the mm -hmm. loan. And so they might offer you um, what's called a partial claim. So they'll take what you owe and put it on the end of the loan. Mm -hmm. That's a zero interest deferred payment. So it just sits there until you ever sell in the future. And so it's a way that you can preserve the, the home ownership and um, continue on with your payments. 
So a big difference between 2008 and currently is back in 2008, a lot of people were underwater with their mortgage. The mortgage was higher than the actual property values because property values had really sunk. Right. And, the, and their ability to sell their way out of it without a, without a um, authorized uh, approval from the lender to do that was very, was very difficult. Right. It's a little different now because there's still a lot of equities in the home as, as a last resort. Right, right. And this is what we explain to people that, you know, the first thing to do is talk to your lender, see what options you might have. Um, NeighborWorks counselor will take a look at the situation with you and help you navigate those next steps, what makes the most sense. If you can afford the mortgage, you know, we'll help you with um, some resources and, and um, assistance to, to try to save the home. But in, ca in some cases where it just doesn't make sense, we'll also counsel you on ways to end, end the home ownership if that's what's needed. But, but our goal is to help preserve the home ownership. Yeah, so while we're not in crisis mode now because of the moratorium, because it's only gradually uh, starting up again, I thought it was important to get that information out there right away. Right. So people that watch the show would um, understand um, that they have a responsibility to monitor their payments right. and their ability to pay and take action. Right. So one of the most important changes that happened recently was in December, a new program started just for homeowners called the Homeowner Assistance Fund, HAF or HAF is the nickname. And so that program um, was designed and implemented by the Treasury through the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. And so um, NeighborWorks isn't running that program, but we are the counseling agency for anybody that applies that's in our service area, which is the whole South Shore. And so if you go to NeighborWorks website, the link to apply for this homeowner assistance fund is right on our homepage. And so basically, if you've been affected by COVID in any way, um, you can apply for, to have, they'll, they'll essentially bring your loan current. So they'll pay everything that you owe, and then you'll just have to maintain the payments going forward. Right. That's great. Um, if you owe prior to 2020, then you know there'll have to be a different conversation um, because they can't pay anything that's prior to January of 2020. But what we say is anybody that's in mortgage default in Massachusetts, um, they should apply for this fund. They'll be connected with a counselor, and then we'll help them navigate you know, um, those steps to hopefully getting their loan brought current. So I know you're also very involved, um, your organization very involved in home buyer education. Yes. You want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. So one of our main goals um, for NeighborWorks is to stabilize communities by creating educated home buyers. So we have a robust um, home, home ownership education program. And so we just feel, I mean, studies have shown that an educated home buyer is a lot less likely to default because what happens with the home buyer education is not only you're going to learn the whole process of home buying, um, how much, you know, what credit scores do you need? How much savings do you need? You know, what's the income? How, how do you get pre-approved for a loan? All of that. But you're going to be connected with a counseling agency, mm -hmm. a, a, a counselor, who will help you take a look at your own cer certain situation and give you the next steps to take those home ownership steps, get you as ready as you can before you get pre-approved. I you know you've made it uh, very easily accessible yes. these days. Yes, so our, our home buyer education program is um, online. So when you sign up and register for a class, you'll get a link to complete the online education portion. It could take you four hours, it could take eight, depending on your pace. But you do that on your own. There's four modules that you complete with a little quiz at the end. Don't be nervous. But, um, but then once, you're, once you've completed the online portion, then we'll sign you up for a Zoom session. Okay. So in the Zoom session that you're invited to, you're going to have a realtor and a lender speak, a local, local. So mm -hmm. that's the local connection. And so you'll be able to ask questions and, um, and learn about that process of what it's going to look like to go get pre-approved and then w working with a lender. We are um, also uh, offer offering, since COVID started, um, in-person sessions. So the online okay. and then in-person classes. But all of that is on our website. 
including a calendar with those um, Zoom classes and in-person classes. So what is the typical uh, cost of a, pro of a program? So the hybrid class, which is on the online portion and the Zoom session, it's $45. Great. And so um, once, you're fin once you're completed, you'll have a counseling session and um, we'll do an action plan with you. And then when you're ready to buy, that's when you'll um, ask for your certificate. Okay. If you're at the finish line and your lender says, hey, you need home buyer education, we do have an online only um, option for $95. And okay. so that's for the person that they're already working with a lender and a realtor. They don't need that portion of it. Mm -hmm. So they can just do the online portion. They'll have a counseling session and they get their certificate. So what kind of resources do you have for first time home buyers? So one of the big ones and with the, the hot topic in most of our classes is down payment assistance because that down payment is a huge piece of money, you know? And so while we try to help people prepare on how much savings they should start out with, um, helping them with resources toward that down payment is, is important. So there's two, two different kinds of down payment assistance. There's location programs. For example, the city of Brockton takes money down from HUD and implements it out to anybody that's buying in Brockton. Mm -hmm. There's income limits and there's purchase price limits. So there's little hurdles to get through, but NeighborWorks administers that program for the city. So by taking a class, connecting with NeighborWorks, you'll be also connected with that resource. Right. Um, there's also lender-based programs, and the, most, the, the newest one is through Mass Housing. So if anyone would, would want to check that out, they can go to masshousing.com. They have brand new down payment assistance um, available. You could get up to fifty thousand dollars. Wow! It's amazing. So um, again, there's there's rules to these programs. Sure. So uh, I would say any home any home buyer, um, it's it's up to them to do their due diligence right. and do their research and see if those programs might be available. So location based programs we administer Brockton. There's a Taunton area program, the Quincy area. On our website, there's a down payment assistance page and it has all those resources. Great. Locate, uh, lender based programs, it's unlimited where you can buy. You know, you can buy anywhere in the right. state. Right. So That's great. Yeah. So I know you've been involved in the shows and typically talk about renters, but I know you also have a very strong renter assistance program. Right. So as, as everybody knows, you know, COVID impact was, was huge for renters. Um, once they lost their income, the inability to pay their rent, they're facing eviction. So NeighborWorks administers the RAFT program, and that's the rental assistance program for the state. And um, so for, for people in this area. And so again, on our website, which I'm sure they'll post, it's nhsmass.org. The application for rental assistance is right on the, the um, homepage. And so for that program right now, it's it's um, there's state funds. The maximum you can get in a 12 month period is $7,000. And that can hopefully, you know, for past due rent and maybe one month of future rent, you know, if needed. So I know in the past, the actual owners of a three family, for example, could apply for it. Yes, landlords and tenants can apply. Okay. Same link. So once you click the link for the application, it'll um, ask you at some point, are you a tenant, are you a landlord? But absolutely, landlords can apply on behalf of their tenant, but they'll just need the tenant's cooperation. Mm -hmm. The tenant has to provide a copy of their ID, you know, um, and also a, a consent form. So it's not like the landlord can do it without the tenant's knowledge. But um, Any programs you're thinking of in the future? You know, we're, we're always researching what, what could help the most. And right now, one of the big crises we're seeing is rent increasing. And I mean, there was an article recently where there's actually bidding wars. Mm -hmm. for, you know, a renter that. goes to, to look at an apartment and you know, they're being told, oh, there's five other people looking at this apartment. You should bid $50 more right. a month, you know? Right. So, so we see this, this increase of rent and um, and that's, that's causing renters to really struggle. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, we'd like to see some kind of program where there would be some kind of incentive for the, for the landlord to maybe keep the rent the same, maybe a tax incentive okay. or, you know, something 
because we know being a homeowner, those costs have gone up and, and we can't fault the landlord for wanting to right. raise the rent, but in a situation where it's displacing the, the, um, the tenant, it can be a very difficult situation. So I don't know what that look like, but these are just some of the things sure. that we think I about, you understand know. understand things change. Trying to stabilize. Need, needs change. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So the best way for people to get started is to go to your website. You want to share that again? Sure. It's nhsmass.org. So nhsmass.org. On our website, we have all the information for renters seeking assistance with their rent, homeowners seeking assistance with their mortgages, home buyers needing education or interested in down payment assistance, and all kinds of other resources. Great. You're always a great source of information. Thanks, thank John. Thank you for being on the show no, again. And thank again. you again. again. <laughs> and thank you again for your partnership with sure. NeighborWorks. Great. Welcome back to the Register Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. I want to thank Cindy Pendergast for the great job she did from NeighborWorks talking about all the different facets that NeighborWorks offer people for free, except for the home buyer class, which is a great bargain uh, for very small money. Uh, so if you're in trouble with your mortgage, reach out to NeighborWorks. If you want to buy a home, I strongly advise you to take one of their first time home, home ownership classes. It's a great opportunity to learn about things you should know about buying a home. And uh, they continue to come up with great programs to help people out and, and go to their website whenever you can to see updates. This segment of the show is really about some of our notable record collections, both county and colony. The holidays for the month are numerous. Independence Day the 4th, National Pita Colada Day the 10th, National Ice Cream Day the 17th, National Hot Dog Day the 20th. You ever saw the uh, hot dog eating contest on Coney Island? It's fascinating. National Cheesecake Day, Cheesecake Day on the 31st, and National Avocado Day on the 31st. But we're going to talk about some of our great history relating to the Revolutionary War, because that relates to a July 4th holiday. The first one you're going to see is of John Hancock. John Hancock was the president of the Continental Congress. He lived in Boston, but he owned a wharf in Plymouth. His signature on the Declaration of Independence cast no doubt of his ardor for the cause. It's a very large signature. The first one that signed it, because of his defiance for independence, is well known, uh, so much so that when people ask you to sign a document, many times they'll say, put your John Hancock on it. But he was a very uh, well-known and passionate revolutionary person and happy to have him in our records collection. Next one you're going to see is uh, Hannah Thomas. So Hannah Thomas's husband went and fought in the Revolutionary War. His name was John. He went off and he fought and was killed in the Revolutionary War. He and Hannah had been lighthouse keepers in Plymouth at Garnet Point. So when John died, Hannah was named America's first female lighthouse keeper on land that they had owned. Um, Hannah um, 
held on to that property for a long time during the Revolutionary War. The towns of Plymouth, Duxbury, and Kingston erected a fort on that site, and later the lighthouse was sold to the United States government. It is currently under the ownership of Project Garnet and Bug Light Incorporated. So the next county record is New Guinea Settlement at Party Ways. It's a cemetery. It was land granted to four Revolutionary War black soldiers. And the town of Plymouth granted them the land for use. It's 94 acres on the Plymouth Kingston line. And their names were Cato Howe, Kwame Quash, Plato Turner, and Prince Goodwin. You can actually go on site and walk into that property where their graves are currently. So it's right off of Route 80 in West Plymouth. It is a property that is listed on the National Register of Historic Properties. And if you haven't been there, it's worth pulling over and checking it out. Uh, and last but not least, we've been sharing some of our uh, colonial records since the Plymouth 400. Um, it, it, some of the stories of the colonial records have some great tales, tremendous impact. The first trial by jury in America, uh, the development of private property rights in America. This particular one is very timely, particularly with what the Supreme Court has been doing lately, but it's in reverse of that. It is a decision by the colonial court uh, to promote religion, and it is a vote by the colonial court. It is listed in the Book of Laws in 1658 that actually propagated the gospel and the flourishing of religion. Um, it is for raising comfortable and competent maintenance of it faithful men, don't even mention women. Um, we have those records on the second floor of the Registry of Deeds. They were in a temperature controlled, very secure place, you know, temperature humidity controlled vault. And as times get better, we'll be able to show those documents off a little more. But they're all a great part, along with our other notable records of the American history that are found in our records. History is best told as a story, we always say. So I want to thank Luna Green Baker and Christine Richards uh, from our office for helping me put this show together. I want to thank Mike Simmons and the folks here at Brockton Cable Access. This is my 141st show at Brockton Cable Access. We share this with cable providers throughout Plymouth County, and we share information to people about what for most people is the most valuable asset, their home. So be safe over the summer, be healthy, enjoy the summer, and we'll see you next month. Thank you.